The stellar late season conditions that saw Mike Reed and company have so much success continues its stronghold on the Midwest. Hoping to take advantage of the opportunity, Jared Mills is heading back to the river farm with the goal of filling his first tag of the year in Iowa. It's afternoon of December 26th. Hope everyone had a great Christmas. I'm back in the woods down at the river farm this afternoon. And as you can see, I'm flying solo, but it's probably a good thing. These conditions, there's very little wind, no cover. Um, this time of year with pressure deer, it gets hard to get away with a lot. And when you add that second person, it does add a lot to the mix with regards to movement and everything like that. And besides that, I do enjoy hunting by myself. It's kind of takes you back to the old days. Uh, besides all the extra work when carrying, when walking in and self-filming, obviously, it is enjoyable nonetheless. Um, back in the same stand that I actually encountered Marino in back in November, but unfortunately he has not been on camera in probably uh, over a month, I guess. So I am pretty much crossing him off the list. Past him, we have that DAC buck. He's been in here a little bit, not super frequently. The deer that's been in here a lot is the Black Eye 10. And at this point in the season, being a five and a half year old deer, if he comes in tonight, he's gonna be pretty tempting, especially since I have three buck tags left. And I don't know, you know, it's hard to know enough about social status and dominance, whether he's the reason Marino's not around a lot, I, who knows, but Nonetheless, he's a, he's a good looking five and a half year old deer and if he comes in tonight, he might be in trouble. With the self-filming setup, I tried to keep everything really compact and tight in here. I got my bow, got camera, got all set up to where I can just shoot sitting down. I won't have to move a lot if I have a lot of deer around me. So that's the hope. Um, like I said, there's not much cover here. And if, if a lot of deer do come into this plot, it's gonna be important that I don't move much. And the deer can kind of come from multiple directions here. So, like I said, it's just after 2.30. Hopefully the deer moving well tonight and can have a good hunt. Deer begin to move and Jared double checks his ranges, keeping an eye out for one of the mature bucks to move through the bottom. 31 miles to the northwest, team member Caleb Griner is also hunting. Tonight, however, his young cousin Jack is behind the gun, and with multiple bucks on camera, hopes are high. Well, welcome back to Midwest Whitetail. We're here after this deer I've never heard of before. Um, supposed to be a pretty nice buck. Hopefully we can drop him on the ground and um busy day today. Um, I had to work with hogs and thankful I could come out here with Caleb and Casey and hunt for a little bit. So that's about it. We're back at a familiar farm. We are back down on the river bottom farm in the food plot, the same plot that Max actually harvested uh, his bow buck last year. But the reason we're down here is because I I actually put a few cameras on the plot for late season and finally this cold weather came back and just seems like it snapped them back into it. So they're back on the feed pattern. We've had tripod show up. We've had the tight 10 from the summer show up and there's a couple other good mature bucks, but um, hopefully he can get his first deer for the year now. Isn't that right, buddy? Yep. All right, he says it's gonna happen today, so he's not usually wrong. Last time we went out, he said it wasn't gonna happen, but today, we got the thumbs up, so hopefully today's the day. I'm pretty sure this is a nice butt, but I'm not 100%. 
with Jared, the deer beginning to pour into the plot.
talk about agonizing, waiting for that deer to finally work within bow range with the plot filling up. That is the Black Eye 10. I mentioned earlier, I was not at all surprised to see him. In fact, he was the first deer to come in the plot. He was there the entire time. I don't know how long I filmed him. It felt like an hour, but he did duck the shot a little bit, so I think it was a little bit high, but I waited until he's quartering away. So I should have had a lot of room for air there left and right. He ran off and stood there for a little while. And the exit looked pretty good from what I could tell. And he actually started to kind of lose his legs a little bit. And then he bounded off and got behind some trees where I couldn't see him. So that was fun. Uh, definitely exciting. And hopefully we have a five and a half year old on the ground. Right there. There we go. There he is, right there. He didn't go far at all. He, I can't believe we didn't see him go down. Or maybe I'll, I'll look at the foot. All right, well here he is, the deer we call the Black Eyed Ten. Five and a half year old, who we have an absolute ton of history with. Just wanted to get him out here in the daylight and, and talk about that more. It's kind of crazy, this deer, anytime you'd go to hunt that property, you'd almost expect to see this deer. He's, he's always a magnet no matter where you hunt. And uh, my first encounter with him was back in 2018 when he was a three and a half year old. And then uh, last year we had so many encounters with him as a four and a half. And then same thing this year. I don't, I don't know how many times we've already encountered him this season and passed him this season. Um, for whatever reason, that property this year has a ton of mature deer. Without going through and actually adding them up, I bet there's at least six deer that are over five and a half years old. And that's a, that's a lot for a 200 acre property. And you never really know what that social you know, hierarchy, that dominance is, but I don't know if this deer, you know, he was just so active and he's always running around the farm. You wonder if he could be the reason that some of the deer like Merino didn't spend time there this year. Uh, of course, it's, it's so hard to really know, but regardless, he's a five and a half year old deer, great deer to take. I'm sure I'll get questions about why I'd pass the deer early in the season and then kill him late, but you know, sometimes it's just about the hunt. I had a lot of fun last night just hunting by myself and, and no offense to any of my cameraman of course, but I, I really did enjoy hunting by myself last night. Um, just seeing that seeing that late season deer movement and cap it off with a with a mature deer. So uh, late season's not over, like I mentioned. I saw two tags and hopefully we can get at least one more buck on the ground. While Jared celebrates the close of the Black Eyed Ten story, 30 miles to the north, Mike Reed and his daughter Anna are back on the home farm. Because we're deer hunting, and this is my first time deer hunting. And I don't know what day it is, but my daddy can probably tell you. Yeah, daddy knows all the stats. <laughs> it's your second time deer hunting, right? Because we hunted last night. Uh -huh, but we didn't get anything. Yeah, that's okay. We don't get one every time we go out. No, we don't. Yeah. It's December 27th, Sunday. Day two for Anna. We went to the other redneck blind last night and we saw 20 deer, but we only had a couple of them come in front of the blind. That blind doesn't set up nearly as well as this one does. This one has worked great for Bella, my nine-year-old, and my wife, Catherine. Uh, and then the wind switched, so we couldn't come back here last night, but now we're back out of the north. There's a front blowing through. We got sleet 
right now, and it's going to be snowing here in a little bit. And we're excited to try to get Anna hey. her first deer. Okay. She wants to shoot a buck like her mom and her sister, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I got her a doe tag and a buck tag, and uh, we're just happy to all be in the blind together. Mama's here tonight too, so we really get to enjoy some family time. We've got some uh, turkeys out in the field. It's about 2.40, so we have, you know, two and a half hours to go. Pour it out. They're coming. Here they come. Here they come. Oh, damn. Just wait. Just, you just look right now. There's some pretty. It's a bunch of them. They're coming out. Look out the window. Yeah, there's that. There's that broken brow tan. That's a buck we want to shoot. Okay. His rack is full of snow. I am so excited because I just for, for, shoot my first bug and my two parents were with me and the best time of my life. You did such a good you job. Did a great job. Uh, and a second day hunting. This is the same blind that Bella and my wife Catherine shot out of three out of four days. Anna, there's a doe coming right here. Let's get this doe. Okay. Let's get this doe. She smoked. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> she's, she's not going. About to go down in the field right there. All right, well, this is getting more and more exciting. Um, it's always fun hunting in the snow. When she shot that buck, he was slightly quarter in two, so I wanted to give him a little bit of time. It looked like a great shot. We watched it back. And uh, she has a doe tag, so she's like, Can I shoot a doe too? And the does were coming right out after she shot. So I said, Let's do an interview, and then the does will slowly work their way down here. Well, in the middle of that interview, this doe just walks into the frame. I was like, oh, there's your big doe. And then just she like, just jumped up and shot it. Yeah, and then I pulled like my sleeves up like I'm just like doing this. And, I'm, <laughs> and we're like so excited. Getting to work. <laughs> so it looked like she made an awesome shot of the doe. A little hard for Chase to turn the camera around while we're doing an interview and get on the doe, but it looks like it's, it's on there good enough. So we got two deer to recover. The snow's still really coming down. Sunset is right about now, so we're gonna get out and go track them up and uh... And this is so amazing. It's the best day of my life. <laughs> Isn't it? It is pretty exciting. 
All right, well, I just got off of work and we just beat the sunset to take some photographs. I'm back at home. Uh, Chase and my wife and my brother and, and my father-in-law, they were all able to get out and get Anna's deer today while I was at work. Um, he was right where we thought he would be. He made it up the top of that hill and then bedded back down and, and didn't go much further. I think that, you know, had we waited a couple hours last night, we probably would have just found him in that first bed. But I thought the shot was a little bit better than it was and elected to take up the trail with that snow coming down heavy. And we jumped him. And after we jumped him, I just said, well, we're going to leave him until tomorrow morning. Beautiful deer. That's actually the same buck that Bella almost shot a couple nights before. A couple points, you know, those redneck blinds. I can't say enough about them for this purpose. Being able to take kids, beginners, where it takes a lot of discussion in the blind, where to aim, are you ready, you know, movement, etc. She can stay warm with the heater. Uh, we can play games, do all the sorts of things. So it's it's a great family activity really allows me to get my young kids out in the woods and spend some quality time. I mean, I had my wife in the blind, Chase in the blind, we're all in there just having a good old time and Anna was able to have a successful hunt and take her first two deer ever. It's a, uh, it's been a dream season for me to be able to get them all out and, and get multiple great bucks down and, and just have a good time. That crossbow uh, makes it easy and, and that redneck blind does too. Looking forward, my wife uh, got her landowner tag and so she's gonna be going after Tex. And then I still have my statewide archery and my late muzzy. And so uh, now that I've gotten, uh, this was our primary goal for late season, get Bella and Anna bucks. Now I'm gonna be looking to the river bottom farm, maybe seeing if I can't get back on DAC or, or uh, targeting some of these other bucks that we have showing up on camera. Was this pretty fun? Yeah. Are you happy that you found your buck? Yeah. And you got a buck and a doe? Yes. Pretty cool. Well, I love spending time with you in the woods. We've had tripod show up. We've had the tight 10 from the summer show up. And there's a couple other good mature bucks. And then I still have my statewide archery and my late muzzy. And so uh, now that I've gotten, uh, this was our primary goal for late season, get Bella and Anna bucks. Now I'm gonna be looking to the river bottom farm, maybe seeing if I can't get back on DAC or, or uh, targeting some of these other bucks that we have showing up on camera. You know, one of the things that is exciting too. It doesn't really affect any of my other late season plans. I still have two buck tags left uh, for these last couple weeks and I still have the same same hitless as before so hopefully I can get at least one more buck on the ground. Hunting during the late season with a bow in hand can be a daunting task but as Jared Mills showed with his successful harvest of the Black Eyed 10, great conditions and a rock solid plan can result in the opportunity all of us with the tag are looking for. Mike Reed and his family continued their unprecedented run, and with a fresh snowfall following Anna's incredible evening in the redneck blind, Mike now goes back to the playbook to figure out his next move. With another round of weather in the forecast, the deck seems to be stacked in our favor once again. Already this late season is at the top as one of our best ever, and with time remaining on the clock, we plan to leave it all in the field. After all, the reality is beginning to set in. We don't even want to think about how long it will be until we are once again chasing November.